I started collecting records like 20 years ago. I kind of fell into that because CDs were coming out around that time, except I grew up really, really poor. And so at the same time, everyone was like dumping off all their vinyl records at the thrift stores. I would go find Violent Femmes, Kiss, uh, The Misfits. My friends were coming to school, I got the new Nirvana album, 15 bucks, so I got the new Violent Femmes album for a quarter, you know. I find it weird that the, you know, the people who, who don't love music, who aren't all about it, and you meet those people every once in a while like, eh, uh, no favorite bands, no, no, I don't really you know, collect music. For me, that's, that's bizarre. Music is, is life. Music's a way of expression. The visceral experience of like dealing with customers and meeting people, building relationships, you know, with, with people like based on music. And I feel like we're doing something. We're in a very small town. Titusville is a, a tiny town, you know? And I feel like we're doing something to bring a little bit of culture back to this town that's been missing for a while because there was no other independent music store here. You know, a little more than 10 years ago, all these big box retailers really started making all the smaller stores tank. A lot of people tell you, yeah, music sounds better on vinyl, and it's a more visceral experience over the digital format. When it comes to vinyl records, it's a tangible experience. You have to love vinyl to have it. You have to take care of it. You know, you have to make sure it's standing upright, it's not getting warped, it's not, you know, getting dusty or anything like that. We're CDs, no one cares. Digital's more of like a sterile sound. It's more processed, more clean. Whereas on a record, there's nuances that are hidden in the grooves. We do cut records for, for bands and just people want to come off the street. Maybe they have a greatest hits they put on CD of their own stuff they like. I can do a one-off 12-inch of all their favorite stuff so they can listen to it on vinyl at home. Since we are cutting on a turntable, um, and the reason we use this one is because I can control the pitch. I mean, once this cutter head comes down on it, it changes the drag that's on the, on the record. It kind of slows things down. So as it's going around, I can take this tone arm, this cartridge, drop it down on the record, and through a monitoring system, with about a one-second delay from what I'm doing, I can listen to, on my, on my monitors, what I'm cutting. All those things that people like about vinyl records is what I have to kind of work into what we're doing here. I think our biggest market for us cutting vinyl records is is like independent bands, local bands, or even we've done some bigger bands. We've, we've done bands in Europe and that sort of thing that, that want a handcrafted product, limited edition, limited quantity. Uh, I think locally, I think probably in the state of Florida, we're the only ones that do it in this context, like with a record store, uh, doing it for local bands, um, like in the setup that we do. The record we were just cutting, this is the final product. So we do a fold over cover, and he wanted two, uh, two front sides. Back when we were kids, we were, on. We're shot a star. At least once a month, we have like different local bands or even traveling bands. Uh, come play in the store. We've had bands as far away as Portland, Oregon, Detroit. Just being open, more people have started collecting records in this community. Um, and then even the outside community, we get a lot of business from, you know, as far away as Daytona or Orlando. Um, last week we had some guys from Northern Ireland find us on an app. We have a lot of like really rare nuggets that, you know, some of the other stores don't have in really good condition. We go out of our way to find it. <laughs>